So this is what happens when you hit the ball off the toe. Look at how the club flies open because the center of mass of the club isn't meeting the center of mass of the golf ball. So when the ball meets the toe, it swings wide open and you're going to feel it. There we go. <laughs> there we go. Watch this. Now check out the shank. Look at how much the club wraps around the ball because if the center of mass of the ball hits here, then the center of mass of the club is going to wrap around it and you get that. And those are the crappiest sensations you'll ever experience. You don't want these either. So let us show you how to nail the center of the club face so you don't have any of this twisting and you'll be able to impart and have proper distance control. It all starts with center contact. You're going to love it. Hey everyone, Sean Clement here, PGA professional, teaching specialist. Been doing this for 40 years. Welcome to the channel. Hope you enjoy today's video. Let's get to it. Contrary to what you think, the more you focus on ball contact, the crappier the ball contact's gonna be. Let us show you how your machine actually works to get this done. There's a huge difference between at the ball and through the ball when it concerns distance to ball. So you look at John Rahm right here. Look how close he is to the ball. You'll notice how close Scotty Scheffler is. He's too close and he's got to jump away. But John Rahm doesn't do that. And you'll also notice Tony Finau tends to be a little close to the ball. So watch how the arm anatomy behaves very differently depending upon what your focus is. So if I'm going to swing towards the target, imagine I'm going to take turf from here and I'm going to whip it into the screen to stain the screen with some turf. What would that look like? So the club, you notice, is passing here. Do that again. Look at that. So naturally, it wants to pass here, so I bring that to the ball. Now I'm going to swing at the ball. Whoa! See where the club's passing now? Isn't that nuts? So now I go back here, and now I want to swing toward the target. Well, that's not going to work. I have to swing at the ball in order to get to the ball. But if the ball becomes my target, that's when chaos ensues. Because if that's the target, where are you going to put it? It's like me saying, go to your car, but don't go anywhere. That's kind of silly, isn't it? So this is the vehicle. There's your target. We want to send this over there. So this has to be a precise intersection on the way to the target. So back to, yes, I'm going to target. Send the grass into the screen. Now my eyes are on the grass slightly in front of the ball. The ball can't stop me from sending the grass into the screen. So I'm going to send the grass into the screen. Here we go. And that was absolutely nutted. Wait till you see what that looks like on screen here. That's one of my better strikes, 183 yards. Check this out. So here's contact. And you see how stable, see that? Look at the dot that I have in the center of my, of my club face. Notice the ball is hitting right there in the center. And then from there, look at how stable the club stays along the ground as the ball departs. And then it slightly closes after the ball is continuing. However, if you say, okay, I want to make sure I hit the ball, but now I'm going to go to the target. Whoa. So you say, okay, I'm going to make sure I hit the ball. So you stretch out a little bit for the ball and then you go for the target. And then, whoa, big toe strike. 
And then if you look at what happens to the club, there's, look at how that club just fans right open and there's no energy given to the ball. So I just went from 184 yards carry to 100 yards. Not that good, is it? But then some of you will tend to do this. Yes, I'm going to target, take that in. Okay, now I gotta make sure I hit the ball. And then you go for the ball and then whoops, the right arm is going to extend at the ball. And now we've got a big old shankopotamus. And look at that impact here. So you could see the dot is outside the ball. The ball hits the neck. The neck forces the ball to the right and it forces the club face. It's like the club face is fanning at the ball right now. Couldn't get it on time because the ball left off of the hosel. That's when you hit it off this part right here and the hosel is actually pointed way to the right. So in either scenario, you're not doing very well, are you? So it's really important that A, we have an action to target. And then where is the club passing when we have that action to target? Now to give you comfort, I got one of my favorite tools right here, ball on a string. I'm gonna deliver, right? I'm gonna twirl this ball on a string. Now the ball is creating a beautiful circle, an arc. And I can see where that's passing. So if I wanna clip the tip of the T, I'm not gonna have it drag on the ground. The tip of the T is in the air. So I'm gonna bring it up here. And then I'm gonna move a little closer. And there goes the tip of the T. There goes the tip of that T. I want the ball. There goes the ball. Look how accurate that is. So the ball would be the club head. The shaft and the arms are the string and the string is attached to the shoulders. How is this supposed to go anywhere, by the way? It's impossible for you to do anything wrong when you see where the club is passing. So, all right, now, when I swing back and through without stopping and I just let gravity grab the whole, a hold of the club head, I'm gonna see where it's passing. Can you see the blur of the club? So when I'm sending grass into the screen, I need to pay attention to where the club is passing. Send it. So I saw it pass right there. So I bring that to the ball. Send the tee into the screen. My mind sees a blur moving through the tee and into the screen. So I see the continuation of it beyond the tee and toward the screen. So I send it into the screen. That passed there. I'm gonna send that one into the screen. I'm gonna send this one into the screen. Now let's put a ball on the last one. My brain knows there's a T there, so it's passing here. Now if I send the T into the screen, the ball is gonna meet a little bit higher on the face. So let's see how that works. Send the T into the screen. So that feels like I caught the ball in the center of the face. However, it was a little high in the face because of the T. Look at that. So notice at impact, I have the T with the sole of the club, but because the T is a little too high, the ball is meeting a little higher in the face. Notice how it, uh, it almost got hit off that dot. So there goes the T because the ball can't stop you from sending the tee into the screen, off it goes. So I predicted that I was gonna hit the ball a little high in the face. So I'm gonna put the ball down where the turf is. And we're gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna pretend there's a tee underneath the ball and I'm gonna send the tee into the screen again. What does that feel like again? Oh yeah, yeah, it feels about like that. And that felt absolutely pummeled. And you can see there, there's my 183 carry. 
The other one was about 13 yards shorter. And here's impact. Look at where the ball is impacting there. The center of mass of the ball is in line with the center of mass of the golf club. And off it goes. So a hair, maybe a hair thin, but very, very happy about that strike. Psst, hey, look at this. You know what that means? It's fall, it's off season time, our favorite time to teach for Sav Moo and I. Get with us online once a week over the course of the winter. Get the changes made in your swing, the changes made in your routine, get some turbo into your swing, and then come springtime, it's time to get back out on the golf course and perform. The time to make the changes is now, not next spring. So check out the link below in the description and let's go. Now stay with us, because you'll want to know what's going on with the driver. If you miss hit the center of the face with that, it's going to be a crapshoot, right? So it's very important that you understand how to find the center of the club with the driver. So many of you are hitting the driver way out on the toe. And there's a reason for that. Let me explain. Get some white or yellow electric tape. It won't uh, damage or gum up your club head. Put a strip on each side of the crown. It's gonna look like a racing stripe. So put a strip on each side of the logo on your crown. You'll notice that the logo on the crown for most manufacturers like TaylorMade, Cobra, uh, Callaway, are much closer to the heel because of the forgiving aspect of the club. So my focus now with this is to get the T to somersault into the screen. So instead of sending grass into the screen, I'm gonna take the tip of the T and send it. So I see where the club is passing. Can you see the blur with those two stripes? Then I bring that in. So for many of you, when you put the, the, the tip of the tee between the stripes, it'll feel like you're on the heel. But you can see right there that I'm in the center. So now I'm gonna let the blur of the club send the tee into the screen. See how it somersaults into the screen? See the blur, send into the screen. See the blur, send into the screen. See how perfect that one was? So now, I like a high T, so I'm gonna hover the club right here. I wanna feel like when I get there, it's gonna be in the center of those, you know, the tip of the T is gonna be between those two stripes. So now from there, I'm going to use the blur to make the T somersault into the screen. And that gives me a really solid strike. Look at that. And there it is. See how stable my club head is. There's the ball meeting the, the dot. See how the ball comes off? And notice how very little spin that is. Look at the LA Golf logo right there, how it's barely turning. So that was 1400 RPM and that was nutted. And look at how stable the club head is. Now watch what happens if I hit it off the toe. All right, so when you hit it off the toe, you think you're setting up off the center of the club face, but in actual fact, you're outside the logo. So. I'm trying to send the tip of the tee that way. I felt the club turn in my hands. Wasn't a bad strike, but look at how much less power I had on that. And there we have it. Look at how that opens the club face now. See how I can't see the center dot? That was right off the toe. And look at that thing twist open. Like in your hands, it's gonna feel like an electric eel. And for those of you hitting it in the heel, it's because you're going at the ball. So you set up okay here, and then you go at the golf ball. And then look at what happens. 
now I'm hitting it way you know, into the neck. I've lost so much power. And then look at what happens. See how the, the club now is twisting closed. There goes the ball. And you see how the club is twisting closed? You get what we call gear effect. So if I hit it in the heel, the, the toe of the club or the center of mass of the club is gonna wrap around the ball. But as I hit it in the heel, it twists the shaft. And when the ball comes off the club, it kicks it to the right. That's why the club face for drivers is round. So be aware of that. It may look more open than it actually is. So for those of you who have a tendency to hook a lot, first thing is you need to confirm that you're sending the tee into a somersault toward the target. When you do that, flick the tee into a somersault, you're trying to get the tee to go this way, you're going to be beautifully through the ball. This is one of the tasks that we use here at Wisdom and Golf. So you send the tee into a somersault toward the target, and observe the flight. So you observe where the club is passing. This is a huge help when it comes to the driver because most driver heads are very uh, dimly lit, if you will, black, uh, very dark. And on a dark green background, it's hard to see the blur. So you put some racing stripes on it like this to see where it's passing. And then you start to hone in on your distance, the ball dynamically in relation to the target. For more information on this, go to wisdomandgolfpremium.com and check things out. You're going to see what through the ball versus at the ball means, and you're going to see how we need to set up for dynamic action to the target, which is extremely different than static action towards a golf ball that has no destination. Don't be that person that has no destination for the ball it's gonna pay off in spades. See you soon. Hey, we hope you enjoyed that video. If you wanna work with either myself, Sav, or Moo, check out the description below. And if you want more in-depth instruction with two minimum camera angles, check out wisdomandgolfpremium.com. See you on the other side. Oh, and don't forget to like and subscribe. It really helps us out.